This is Gustavo Chamorro, director of the Digital Media Center, and you are watching Eye on Business. Welcome to the innovation segment on Eye on Business. We are looking at innovative companies, innovative products, and innovative people that invent those products and run those companies. Today we are very fortunate to have Mike and Jason with us. We're going to talk about Oregadio. And uh, gentlemen, uh, tell me a little bit about your product. So we are a portable audio company right here in uh, Costa Mesa, California, and we uh, make cool, unique, different hip speakers that uh, are very good at impressing people. And uh, they're all unique and different in certain ways because they're not normal speakers at all. Okay. Like us, we're not normal people okay. either. Okay, so. sounds good. Well, we, that's the kind of people we like to interview <laughs> on the show. So why don't you just show us uh, one of your products here? Oh. So this is our uh, first product. It's called the Rocket. So what this does, it turns anything into a speaker. Okay. Literally anything. So, so it can turn my iPhone into a speaker. Yeah, it'll turn whatever, uh, if this plugs into your iPhone, whatever this connects to, it'll turn whatever object into a speaker. Okay, so, so let's try it. Okay, here we go. You should press play. Ready to go? Yep. All right. All right, so you can hear a little sound coming out and you can feel it. But then yep. when you go and stick it to something like this big box here. So we have the world's most instantaneous speaker, yeah. right? So the poor man surround sound system, right? Now you did a thing, can you do it on this table? So this one won't work that well on a table. This one works really well in uh, cardboard boxes, okay. microwaves. But this one. All right, so you've got another example here, right? We just launched this product called the Epishock. Now, this one is made for hard surfaces like tables. All right, let's try that. So put it's it like down. Like a rocket on steroids. Like Correct. a rocket on steroids. I like that. So just take it, plug in the cord right here. So this takes all of seconds then to do this, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, right. all our stuff's real easy to utilize. All right, fire up again, huh? Yep. Right. All right. <laughs> You can feel the vibration. You can feel it shaking the whole table. Good song. Fantastic. Shaking the yeah, table. good pick though. So I get to keep this now, right? Just uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we could give it to you after. So, how did you come up with this idea? We're just two crazy guys that come up with crazy ideas. So yeah. we saw something similar when we were traveling in Japan. It was kind of like okay. almost like a Yule log that people put on their tables. Okay. But we know that the world's going towards more mobile and portable devices. So we took that same technology, re-engineered it, and made it something small, portable that'll fit in your pocket or the palm of your hand. Okay. Now, how did you two meet? We met uh, straight out of college. We both got hired by Major Major League Soccer, like the soccer league, Major to run their League's marketing. Right. And uh, Mike and I met and uh, traveled the country together. Uh, running Major League Soccer's marketing platforms, and uh, we both went our separate ways for a little bit, and then uh, got hired by Jansport, the backpack company, to run their marketing, and again traveled. So it was kind of an idea for the travels that we had the idea to come up with the uh, Origadio. We were always listening to music on the road and okay, had like okay. big speakers, but you don't want something this big in your suitcase. You'd rather have something small and portable. So was that the original idea that you wanted something to help people with travel? And uh, yeah, we wanted uh, people to be able to listen to music on the road. So okay. we just wanted our first product were uh, speakers that come flat and fold okay. up like or origami. So hence the name Origadio, the origami of audio. Okay. And uh, we launched them in August 2009. Three months after we launched them, they were named Time Magazine's 50 Best Inventions of the Year list, and caused our business instantly to blow up. And we both quit our full-time okay. jobs and did this since then. So now you've won a couple of awards, as I understand it. What else? Yeah, uh, most recently we got the honor of Entrepreneurs of the Year Okay. from Entrepreneur Magazine. Fantastic. So that was a huge one. And then we've also been featured on Shark Tank, uh, okay. like you said, Time Magazine, and tons of other uh, honorable lists. Okay. And the business is already on its way to some success milestones, as I understand it. Yeah, so we did $3.5 million in sales last year, and uh, we have our products in about 3,500 stores across the country. I wish it was 3,500 countries. That would be amazing. <laughs> That's next year, Multiple right? planets. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, yeah, we're growing internationally. We're doing our first uh, trade show uh, called CBIT, uh, which is in Germany, and that's like to launch our business on an international scale in the next couple of weeks. And when you say we, is it just the two of you? Is there more on um, the team? Or? The two of us is the brain trust, but we have a team of about 12 people. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did you meet those people? How did how did they come into the <laughs> Well, business? we moved out here in you know, beautiful California about a year and a half ago. Okay. It was just the two of us prior to then, so we really needed a team to help blow this thing out of the water. And just, you know, the normal career builder, Craigslist. Craigslist. Mm -hmm. So you just and literally just, met these people in the last yeah. year or so? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've only been with so us anywhere we, between. It's like employee growth has gone like hockey stick style, you know? So it's two people and now we have 12 people and we'll hire more. Uh, at the end of this year, too. So there's still a shot for me then to get hired and well, get maybe. the employee we, discount. We need yeah. someone. To, we need someone to ship boxes. So. Okay. <laughs> Sold. Hey, if I get one of those, uh, I'll do it. Yeah. Whatever. So what uh, for maybe the the tech folks out there? Is there any particular aspect of the technology that you could explain to our audience that might enlighten them a little bit without giving away the secret sauce? Yeah, uh, <laughs> secret sauce. Uh, so. How this works is it's a transducer, right? Transducers have been around for over 60 years. People have transducers in like drywall of their house to turn their walls into subwoofers. Yeah. We saw the technology and we're like, transducer, they make small ones. We saw that it worked really well on cardboard boxes and tables. We're like, why not just make the same concept? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did you discover that it worked well with cardboard boxes? What was that? Trial and error, you know. Okay, okay. We bought some transducers and stuck them in like cereal boxes and milk cartons. <laughs> okay. like, cardboard works really good because so were you lot guys seriously inebriated when you started these series of experiments? Well, or no, we can't disclose that. We can't disclose that. We do like beer, but uh, <laughs> okay. the BAC level might have been a little high. I just trying to picture you guys in a room putting this on a cereal box. Well, we were putting this on the bottom of like a keg cup and drinking <laughs> okay. out of it. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the truth comes out. Okay, um, but how it works is. Basically Basically what it does is it sends out vibration sequences yep. and then whatever it attaches to that becomes <laughs> the speaker. So the table becomes the speaker, okay. the box and so forth. Now if you were advising people on the best use of the product, I mean you, it sounds like you can put it on a lot of things. Yeah. But if you're saying look for maximum quality you should use the cardboard box, the I would table, say the, the, what? the cardboard box <laughs> for really? the rocket one and okay. then tabletops uh, for the like Epishock. wood tables for the Epishock. Those really resonate the best. Okay. The best part about them too is all our stuff is interconnected so you can actually connect all of our products together and they plug into each other. So the more and more you connect, the louder and louder and louder they get. So you can put this on something metal to get your trebles while you have this on a big wooden table for your base. Okay. And you can keep going and keep going and keep right. going. That's All where right. it gets That's cool. a little scary. We're, yeah. we're crazy. Now you've got, you've shown us two products. You have what, eight or so? It's yeah, we have eight products. We're about to launch our ninth. So uh, we have three products that are completely customizable. So last year we launched the world's first ever custom headphones where people can go to our site, upload their own pictures, and then we print and ship them within a week on a custom pair of uh, outside noise reduction headphones, okay. which is cool. So what's the difference between these two products and the other six or so? Um, they all do different uh, purposes. These are the two that turn anything into a speaker. The other ones are speakers, okay. right? So. Practical versus cool, wow, awesome, uh, fun. So, okay. speakers versus turn anything into speakers. So, which are the best sellers? The fun ones or the real speakers? The rocket fun ones. Yeah, the rocket. fun ones. Yeah. Okay. This does very well. We've sold over a quarter million units of this product, okay. and uh, it's got the huge wow factor. After we were on Shark Tank with it, people it just took off. Now, so when you quickly. say people, kids. Old it's, guys it's like pretty, me, what? It's pretty incredible, actually. We thought it'd be only you know for like the college kids or recent yeah, yeah. grads, but it's really been everybody from like age 13 to 90. My grandpa just picked one up the other day. Why are you looking at me when you say 90? I'd say. Oh, you're the host of the show. <laughs> you're the host of the show here. Eyes always on the host. <laughs> so literally, the literally whole range anybody. of people are going for the product. That's amazing. Exactly. Because you got to think, yeah, music's universal, right? Everyone's yeah. got a device that plays music. So the good thing for us is the speakers in these things suck, right? So <laughs> as phones keep getting smaller and smaller, the speakers are going to keep getting worse and worse, which makes the portable speaker industry a huge industry to be in in the future. Yeah. So what's next for you guys? You built eight we, products, got a ninth coming out. Is there a whole different shift that happens after this? Yeah, we're, it's, things are getting bigger and better. It's actually, we got something up our sleeve that's really going to shock the market. It's something called spatial audio. And what it does is a kind of a dock, but you can also put it on top of your laptop for your iPad or laptop, whatever the case. It connects with Bluetooth, but what it, the magic trick is it recognizes how far away you are from the device and sends out audio waves from that distance that trick your ear into thinking the sound is coming from 3D all, all around, around you. you. Portable 3D sound, nothing like it exists. Yeah. So I don't need one of those big man caves. I can just slap on your device and right. Yeah, go. you're good to go. Plus, it'll fit in your like backpack or suitcase if you're mm -hmm. traveling too. Okay, so it's back to the. You don't need again. multiple ones all around you, like a 5.1 system or anything like yeah. that. Just slim device like ours. So, um, 
Am I allowed to ask what the price range is of these magical products? Sure. Uh, the Rocket goes for uh, 35 retail. Epishock is 45 retail, and the Magic new product will be about 100. So all our okay. stuff is okay. price sensitive too. Okay. And has that made a big difference? I mean, um, yeah, it certainly helped because we actually launched our company in 09, which was a pretty down economy at that time. So our price sensitivity really helped uh, us progress as a company. Plus the wow factor. Yeah, and the wow factor never hurts. So how did you learn all this? Is was it through your prior jobs? I mean that. Yeah. Because you seem like you're hitting all the key milestones for a business here. Right. So we're marketing guys, right? We're yeah. product marketing yeah. guys. Okay. Okay. But you can give us any product, and we could probably figure out how to do the same thing with it. But okay. uh, at our old jobs, we were doing product sourcing overseas too. So okay. we knew about working with manufacturers in China and how to build and develop products from working at JanSport at the backpack company. So, so you mentioned travel, and you mentioned that you did some of this overseas. So is there any difference you're finding between the the U.S. market and the overseas market with your products? The product uh, resonates, no pun intended, really well in uh, Europe, uh, especially like with the sleek design and cool factor. Okay. They do very well in Europe, especially uh, our origami folding speakers do yep. well in Japan yep. and Asia, as you can imagine, as well. Um, the customization aspect of our custom headphones does very well overseas because the markets in Asia love custom anything. So okay. I think we're growing a lot uh, overseas as so well. So say a little bit more about custom because you've mentioned that a couple times, but I'm not sure I quite understand what that means. So. Uh, custom, right? So we launched a custom speaker called Doodle, right? Okay. It's a speaker that's about the size of an iPhone. You go to our site, you upload a picture, and then we print and ship it on a custom speaker. So okay. the speaker has a picture of okay. you and your kid, your favorite okay. vacation spot on it. Same with the custom headphones. So we looked at the headphone market. Okay. So many headphones look how the manufacturer wants them to look. And we said, you know what? Customers' headphones should reflect their own personal taste. Okay. So people can upload their own pictures or artwork and we print it on the headphones for them. Great. Yeah, yeah, so cool. complete personalization. So is that selling better than everything else then, the customization part of it? It's certainly been growing. It's one of the biggest growth sectors we have for our business. Yeah, okay. people are, and people love it too. It's, I mean, even from like people do iPhone cases nowadays, yeah, yeah. their own t-shirts, everything like that. Why not something in the electronics realm like speakers, Fantastic. headphones, everything Fantastic. like that. Yeah. So one last thing. How can people find out more information about your product line and your company? So they can go to www.orgaudio.com, O-R-I-G audio, orgaudio.com, or go out to your favorites like Bed Bath & Beyond or you know, Nordstrom's, that's where our product's sold to. Okay, and I'm gonna, I do have one more request of you. If you were giving advice to other entrepreneurs out there kind of struggling to get to where you guys are, do you have any particular advice for them? Yeah, I think like a lot of people, you know, come up with ideas for great products where it's like, you know, I've got an awesome idea for a product, but they don't do anything about it. You don't want to be that person sitting on the couch three years from now and see that product on TV and be like, I had the idea for that. Actually, like go out and actually try your ideas. Worst comes to worst, you fail, but there's no harm in failing, you know. Okay. Failing only makes you better, so yeah. go out and, and try. And further on his point is uh, you're going to hear no a lot. Don't let yeah. that get you down. It's yeah. how you bounce back that really makes, uh, makes out who you truly are. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you guys also started more from the marketing side, the market pull versus technology push side. So yeah, is yes. that part of the message here too or not? I think it's been a big advantage to us. Okay. okay. Certainly. Yeah, we uh, press is our best friend. We've been featured in every major press outlet because free marketing is the best kind of marketing, right? Yeah. So we rely on press a lot and uh, it's, you have to, you know, with cool products, you've got to figure out a way to, you know, get the consumer and the product's attention out there to the best advantage. So. The marketing helps. Well, you guys are good spokespeople for your products. So, no, I hope uh, so. Yeah. We're the ones that <laughs> if, we, if we can't talk about it, no one can sell it, probably. <laughs> well, thank you for being no on problem. the show today. Course, really Shan. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Shan, thank you appreciate very much. It. This has been Eye on Business, the segment on innovation. Now, for all of you that could not get into the NAM show, we are going to take you inside this world-famous music convention, the National Association of Music Merchants, all the newest and best instruments and equipment the music industry has to offer. 
So sit back, have a cup of java or a glass of your favorite beverage, and let the Ask Dino Show take you on this great road trip. Ask Dino Show coming at you. Bada bang. Team Mad Dog on the mic. If you're going to get it right, the mic. Ask Dino. If you want to get it right, your production is a tight. Turn them on tonight and ask Dino. Dino. He knows. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ask Dino Show. My name is Dino Madaloni. We are coming live from Los Angeles, California. Now, we went to the 2013 NAMM show. We checked it out for two days. We had a phenomenal time. We went and interviewed a whole bunch of people, some of my buddies in there. Now, this is the place you want to be. This is the Mecca. This is the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. This is, this is the Utopia. This is the Disneyland of music. If you want to be anything in the music business, you go to the, the, to the NAMM show, and that stands for National Association of Music Merchants, okay? Stay the NAMM show. Right, you have an article online with us. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Dino, you know, I know you've been working with David for a long time. Greg Wright has his own special signature guitar. Okay. This is Tony De La Rosa from Samic Music, and, and you are. The Ask Dino Show, and we are inside the NAM Show, the 2013 NAM Show. Come and check it out. A lot of fun, a lot of music, a lot of stars, a lot of great instrumentation, a lot of stuff going on. Come on, let's check it out. This guy is one of the best guitar players on the planet. And guess what? Well, the first of all, let me say this. This guy has played with some of the biggest names in the business. He played with the Jackson, of course, Michael Jackson and the Jacksons, uh, Mick Fleetwood, Becca Bramlett, all kinds of people. This guy has done so many things, played on movies. Uh, he's always my first call guitar player, Mr. Greg Wright. Greg, how you doing, man? Good to see you again, man. Good, good, good. How you doing? <laughs> he's been on the show before. But we got something special for you now. What we got here is... Greg Wright has his own special signature guitar that, that, that basically, well, let's do this. Greg, why don't you tell us how this came about and, and what you did to make it your own signature. Let's first of all, the signatures right here, right there. So I kind of came up with this motif, uh, the Rising Sun motif that I had had on the Jackson tour. Right, I remember but, that, I remember that guitar. I, I, that guitar's on the wall at the Hard Rock Cafe. Right. So uh, we talked Hard about Rock it. Hard Rock Cafe, guitar on the wall, but. We talked about it and uh, made some improvements on that initial design, and of course, you know, over that time I've evolved as a player, so some things have changed. Right. right. So uh, Trev made this nice floating bridge, we put a P90 in here, nice wide radius neck, because you know I have big hands. Right, right. And uh, jumbo frets. He trimmed the uh, big block away from the neck. Set. I've been playing drums all my life. I don't know what the hell this is. The newest thing in music. I have no idea what it does. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's a musical donkey. Finally found him, the originator of heavy metal. Even back in the day, they were still getting the chicks. <laughs> I'm walking out of the NAMM show, and me and Mike, we're walking, walking down, we're ready to go, and we were, we were there two days, we were totally exhausted, but out of the corner of my eye, I see this guy walking by, and I said, I said, what is that? I said, this guy's got to be somebody. He was, he was, it was just what he was, what, what, what I can't say what he was wearing, but what was on him. So anyway, we went up and talked to him. His name is Nomad. He's in a band called Dive Bomber, okay? Check this interview out, it's really cool, check it out. Okay, now this guy, I don't know his name, I gotta say, he's probably the most famous guy in this place. What is your name, by the way? We have a 
Nomad dive bomber. Exactly, and that's what I was gonna call him when I heard that, when I saw him like that. No, this is this is probably the future of music. <laughs> this is if you want a gig, if you want to get noticed, this is the way you walk around right here. Yeah, baby. So tell us what's going on with you, man. Tell us what's, what's going on. Tell the uh, Astino show what's going on with you. I'm the lead singer of a band called Die Bomber. I had a show last night with LA Guns, did a NAM after party. Uh-huh. Love NAM. Yeah. NAM is like a one big song. Yeah. Everybody's part of the song. I love it. Yeah. So now is your music like country? <laughs> and, and, and the name of the band again is? Dive Bomber. My name is Nomad, and I sing for the band Dive Bomber. Okay, just so you didn't get it, it's Dive Bomber. <laughs> Rock and roll. Damn, 2013, baby. <laughs> Feel it. Feel the vibe, yo. Hey, one more thing. What's up? Stay away from my daughter. <laughs> I told you, I told you. You know, I hope I never come across that guy again, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, next. Hey, everybody, look, it's... Thanks for coming down, man. I appreciate up, it. Dino? All right. That wasn't planned at all. No. Yeah, okay. So listen, man, I'm glad you came down. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, tell me about you now. Tell me about this character because you you do the full on, you know, I mean, you look different than everybody else. Tell me, tell me about what inspired you to do this. When I was very young, you know, I've always been in a band. Like my first band, Sold on Murder. Um, I'm really into martial arts and I'm really into like meditation and stuff. Mm -hmm. While the band was sort of like, you know, doing drugs or doing whatever, I just became more artistic. <laughs> This is No Man Die Bomber, and you're watching the Ask Dino Show. It is free girls. Dino. He knows. So anyway, Tony, tell us what's going on with the newest, the, like the newest, newest, best stuff is going on with Sam and Guitar. Okay. The newest and the best. Well, we've uh, we've redesigned the entire Greg Bennett acoustic line right. to where it's um, it's it's narrowed down its focus, but we kept all the best features, all the best things like tone woods uh -huh. and uh, neck profiles and things like that. And we have an all new series that's coming out in 2013. And we're also doing a whole new redesign on electrics and all the bluegrass instruments too. So it's it's a huge work in progress but the first step of it you're seeing here uh, today at nam right which is the redesign of the acoustic series right. anyway, tony keller rosa from savage i can't thank you enough my brother thank you Dan. And, and uh we've known this guy for a long time he's mm -hmm. still one of the best guys i know ah, if you want to buy a guitar that's great come and check these guitars out i'm telling you they are top quality the best there is Castino show coming at you bada bang Not only do we check out a lot of people, but but I, I want to say this, that uh, I just, me, myself, well, one of the reasons that guys like us go to the NAMM show is because we have endorsement deals. And and those endorsement deals is that, that, that companies give us product and then we have to endorse the product, we have to play it. Now, because I've been doing this for a long time, the products, any product that I that I, that I I uh, endorse, I love the product. I, I want to talk about two new products that, 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 that I'm endorsing. Uh, I'm a drummer, been a drummer all my life, and I play Spawn drums. And Brian Spawn, uh, who makes incredible drums, you gotta check them out. He's got a brand new cymbal line, and I'm endorsing those cymbals too, and they're called Simtech. Okay, now there's the cymbal right here. These, I mean, I played every cymbal known to man. You know, I don't, I'm not gonna name them all because you know what they are. But these are fa some fantastic cymbals, so you gotta check them out. Okay, it's Simtech cymbals, Spawn drums, Brian Spawn. Check them out. Okay, uh, this is Dino Madaloni, the Ask Dino Show. And once again, we are at the NAMM Show, and I just ran into one of my best buddies for a long time, one of the best bass players on the planet. He has played with everybody from Chaka Khan, Stevie Wonder, uh, Boss Gags, um, whoever. Whoever. He played, with, he played with whoever. They're a good band, by the way. <laughs> I just heard their CD last week. <laughs> anyway, Mr. D. Lewis here. He is the, one of the bass guys. He, he plays on a lot of my sessions at the studio, practically all of them. He's a well well rounded guy, except that he's nuts. Anyway, we're here at the PV booth. Now tell us, uh, Dick, tell us about the new PV acts and tell us about some of the new things that's going on with PV. Uh, PV's making a grand, brand new series of uh, the Viper guitar amps, uh, Viper okay. 2 great 
tube guitar amps, man. They sound freaking good. Are these like the brand new for 2013? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And they're also making these new acoustic amps that are just really blowing up. Everybody's loving those things, man. Now, the acoustic, amp, the acoustic amp for the acoustic bass? Acoustic the, guitar. Acoustic, oh, acoustic, acoustic guitar. guitar amp. Right, right, Okay, right. okay. And they also got these new serious basses that have these new brand new headstocks on the back that okay. are just amazing, man. And we know just, how important that is. <laughs> yeah, the back, the back is always better than the front. <laughs> but yeah, these new Rudy C's are serious basses, man. I've been... Beautiful instruments, fantastic. And there's like three people sitting around in suits. What's the deal with that? <laughs> where's, where's the rockers when you need them? Never, never around the horn section, never. <laughs> so 2013 NAMM show has come to a close. We did some great stuff this year. We saw some great people. Uh, had some great interviews, saw some incredible musicianship uh, and the new instrumentation. Uh, we learned all about the Samix new guitars. We met the originator of heavy metal uh, and Spider-Man's drum kit. Anyway, we're going to be coming back next year uh, to NAMM Show 2014. Stay tuned. This is Dino Madaloni, The Ask Dino Show, and thank you for watching. See this right here? Audio Technica. <laughs> We're using it. You know what I'm doing? <laughs>